Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to do a quick waterfall and I wanted to do like a little simple video today because I haven't recorded in over a week. It was Thanksgiving last week and I had out of town company and we had both families over and we had my youngest son's birthday, he turned 20 and anyway, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> so. I am wanting to do like a little quick, well, I say quick, but we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> but we are currently making the Time of Wonders. That's the paper collection we're using, so that's what I named the album. So we're making a Christmas album, and we are using the Basically Amazing Foundations in the Ornaments Background Design, and the Basically Amazing uh, Add-on Scrap Journal in the Ornaments, and the Basically Amazing Photo Mats in the Ornaments. So here's the cover. We're doing like a twofer. Um, I still haven't figured out what to call it yet. So it's going to be an interactive scrapbook here and it's going to be more of a scrap journal, interactive hybrid scrap journal thingy here. So yeah. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited about the concept. And I have a whole playlist just for this album beginning to end. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link up there. The first couple videos are the introductions to the templates, so if you already know about the templates, you can just skip those, but I always put those in the playlist so that if you're new and you're not familiar with how my system works, then you can check those out. Whoops, everybody's a little crooked. And I've also been having some changing of season allergy type, type things going on also, so if I sound funny, that's what's going on. A quick update on this. This is the last video where we made this shaker flip thingy insert. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was looking at this yesterday and I got tickled because I put this on upside down. I put this pet this mat on upside down. So this is the ornament background design. <laughs> And I had it flipped the other way. So I literally peeled it off because I used Fabri-Tac. I peeled it off and used Fabri-Tac and put it on straight and really gave it a good burnish. So yeah, I think it's funny. So I haven't edited this video yet, but I have to do that later today. But when I do, I'll have to make sure that I say, whoa, don't do that. <laughs> and then on the back there is the diamond uh, background design. Also, I had either gotten some oil on my foam tape on this shaker bit down here because it came apart just a little bit, so I had to glue it back together and smoosh it. So if you want to see this video, it's in that playlist. This is video number four. But I thought what we would do today is put the little simple waterfall on the back side of this page. So I've already got everything prepped and ready as best I can. There's a whole lot of links down below in the description box, so or the show more section. Some people can call in the show notes. <laughs> but the links to the templates, the links to the playlist, the links to, or I'm sorry, the links to the Amazon list that I have specifically for this project is down there. Links to pro products that I use, my magnet resources, my tape resources, all of that stuff is down there. My stamp set link is down there. If it's not in stock, go ahead use my affiliate link if you would and put your email in there to be notified when they uh, come back and start okay so what you're going to need is i prepped most everything i'm still going to have to cut out a few things so out of the basically amazing foundations i printed page 17 bd i printed it onto white cardstock so i printed printed the plane onto white cardstock and i printed it three times so I've already prepped um, two of the pages, but basically you're going to end up with two of these. You know, you're going to separate them just like this, but I'm going to do one with you. So there is one thing that we need. And then the other thing out of the foundations we need, here it is. The mat for page 8B is on 55B. So I have two options to uh, share, to show, to see which ones. I'm not even sure myself, but um, 
I printed the shades of color in the number 16. Let me show you that. This is the shades of color 2, and I printed number 16, which is this color right here. Right? So I printed that out. I printed it out twice because I don't, I'm not sure which option I'm going to use yet. Let me show you. I printed it out once and then printed page 55B over top. Right? So we might use this background design. Or I printed this page from the add-on scrap journal. There's a printable papers PDF in there. And this is one of those papers. I printed this over top of the purple. And I might use that. And then I printed again. This was a three-time print. I printed the uh, I printed the purple. Then I printed the printable paper. And then I printed the 55B on top. So I can't decide which one of these I'm going to use. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. I've got them both prepped. And as we work through, um, we'll make that decision. All right. So I'm going to take these scrap pieces and put them somewhere else. Oops. I'm missing a piece. Uh-oh. I'll find it somewhere. That's all you're going to need out of the foundations. And then out of the add-on photo mats, I printed page 7BD. I printed the plain photo mats. I printed one page on 80-pound cardstock. And then I printed three pages on 28 pound weight paper you can just use regular copy weight paper if you want to but when i'm doing a photo mat where i'm going to stamp a four by six if i don't need the weight of the cardstock i just print it on you know lighter weight paper because you don't need to add the bulk or the weight if you don't need it so i've already cut out these i don't know if i need i have an extra sheet here but i don't know if i need it so i guess i'll cut it out with you just in case but again i printed one page on cardstock 80 pound white cardstock. I have that linked in my Amazon. And then um, I printed three pages of 7BD on paper, but I'm not sure if I need all three. So when I say my Amazon, I mean there's a specific list that I make for this project. Okay. So that's all we're going to need right now. So let me put these aside and these aside. Let's go ahead and cut these out. We'll start with the photo mats here. I'm just literally going to cut them all the way out, all the way around, and all the way out. Okay, so got those done. I'm just going to add them to the pile because I'm not really sure how many I'm going to need. I accidentally cut too much of the black off over here, but again, that's okay. Not going to hurt anything. Okay, so for page 17 BD, I printed the plane, so it doesn't matter where you start here, but I'm going to take the all the short tabs off and, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to take all the long tabs off, the long tabs, and just one set of the short tabs, and we're going to leave these tabs on. Alright, next thing we want to do is we want to score these. The paper trimmer is a Fiskars Precision Heavy Duty Paper Trimmer. I love it. Some people hate it. It's my favorite ever. It's like a self-sharpening. You just have to, there is a bit of a learning curve when you're working with my templates. So, the reason I like it so much is because you can line up the edges with the blade itself so you get a, a perfect cut it's like a straight cut and you never have to replace the blade so and you can also cut through the thicker material so I, I love it so much um, I also have another paper trimmer it's a rota trim and it's a giant it's a giant paper trimmer let me here I'll take a picture of it and show you so there's my rota trim that's behind me I use it a lot too, but it's it's a little pricey. I will link it down below, but it's a it's a little pricey. If you want to splurge and you make a lot of albums, it may be worth investing in. Um, it's too big to fit on my filming space, but anyway, right? That's pretty cool. It's a it's a fabulous, 
fabulous paper trimmer. Okay. I got a little sidetracked there. All right, so we scored. Now we're gonna prep both of these. And I'm gonna prep it the other way as well. And we're gonna burnish a little. Okay, so I am gonna take a minute to ink these up. And I'm gonna ink up this area here on this back side because you might see it. So I did get a new uh, little spongy thing. But it's still losing some of its fibers. If you miscut on this back side, you can just do this, but I don't think I did that to any of the other ones, so. Okay, oh, see, yeah, it's still, I'm still losing fibers. Okay, and then I'm gonna go on this one. Actually, I think one of these actually, so out of the, all of them, we're using, by the way, we're using walnut stain, distress oxide. I actually, on one of these, so we've got, we had three sheets, and I've already got two of the sheets prepped. I'm, I'm gonna keep these, by the way. Those could maybe come in handy. Um, but one of them, out of the six flips that we have here, I don't need the tab. So I'm going to cut that off. Yeah. Completely forgot that I don't need this little tabby, tabby do. But I might keep that just in case. You never know, you might need stuff like that. Okay, so let me ink that edge real fast. So I didn't need to ink the back of it because you're not going to see it. So, All right, so with the other ones, I'm just going to put tape on the side that doesn't have the ink around the tab. I forgot I didn't need to ink this tab, so I inked all my other ones, but anyway. So this actually is, I think I'm using half an inch. I wanted to make sure the whole tab was stuck down. So this is half an inch tape. I have it linked down below. This one's cherry on top, I believe. So I've already prepped all the other ones. All right. So we've got that. So, and that's the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna have a really cool closure on this as well. I think you guys are gonna like it. I've gr I'm grabbing a scrap stock, card stock here, and we're gonna use it to put our um, waterfall on, I believe. So I'm gonna take one of these. Obviously, this is a photo mat for um, a four by six photo, this page. But sometimes people's printers, including my own, print funny. So I just wanna make sure I've got the right width. So I'm gonna line up my little mark there. And for me, it does end up being at four and a half. And I'm gonna leave the length for now. Get my scoreboard back out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, my first one, I believe, am I gonna start with the first one or am I gonna start with the last one? Like sometimes I can't decide <laughs> which way to go. So you could start by adding them this way and working your way up, or you can add them this way. I think we're going to do it this way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take the tape backing off. Let me get my garbage bowl over here. And I'm going to have that pushed up against that corner. It's just to help keep everything straight and lined up. I'm going to lay that on there and press it down. Burnish. So then the next piece, this piece, this tab here is going to butt right up next to that one. Okay, and we're just going to keep going like that. 
So you'll have to try to figure out which way is easiest for you to see, like how to get it lined up. So I can't decide. I did a little mock-up of it, but I don't know. You just kind of have to play it by ear, you know? So I think what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna lay it on here right up next to that top piece. And then before I burnish, I'm gonna check to make sure it's flat. Yeah. Okay. And the next piece, same thing, I'm going to butt this right up next to that one. And burnish. Next piece. This makes it easier because it's just one unit instead of um, putting these individually down on the page. Does that make sense? Because you may accidentally mess up or something, and we don't want to. We don't want to do that. Okay. All right. So that's pretty good. So then. On this back page, we're going to take this one that we cut the tab off and we're going to stick that on there like that. Okay, so we need to put some tape on this. I think I'm going to use glue though. I think I'm going to use, I'm actually, uh, I better use, I better use some, some tape. Let me just use some tape. This one is. Which one am I going to do? Yep. This one here is 3 8 inch tape. You could use glue. You don't have to use tape. You'll have to also excuse my nails. They are messed up. I've got three broken right now and they need to be done desperately. But it was either film this video or get behind. And I didn't want to get too far behind. So, if I got, you know, if I fixed my nails, I'd have to get behind um, quite a bit. And I don't want to do that. So, all right, let's take the tape backing off. I know there's a ton of different ways to make waterfalls. This is just the way I, I make mine. Okay, so we're literally just going to go, we're going to butt it right up to that one. We're not going to leave this space. I guess we could. Well, I guess we could leave it. Let's leave it. Okay, so now I'm a little bit longer than I was. That's okay though, right? That's okay. I, in the prototype that I made, I didn't leave that space. So let me get a, a piece of tape that's long enough to cover this. Because we're gonna have to mess with it a little bit more still. So, okay. So, we've got that. Yeah, that's fine. My prototype, I didn't didn't do that, but I think it's fine. I think it'll be I think it'd be good. All right, now I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna remove that, and I'm gonna trim this off. I think I'm gonna use my knife to my craft knife to do that. I don't want to. 
cut off the um, fold accidentally. Ah, it's scary. It's not, it's not that scary, but I need to. Also, I need to cut. I need to take that blade off. I think. Okay, and get it. Put a fresh one on. Right, I'm gonna ink that edge up. I'm gonna get, I got a little rough with it. I don't know where I was going with that. Okay. So, the closure is going to be a wax seal, and then there's also going to be um, there's also going to be a string. So you probably saw it already in the thumbnail, but that is why that's one of the reasons why I cut or I printed one of the photo mats in cardstock because we're going to be using this as a closure and then this bottom piece is also going to be out of cardstock because I want it to be really sturdy because the string is going to be coming out from underneath the bottom piece. Okay, so let's work on the top piece first. Well, actually, yeah, let's work on the top piece first. So we need this and then out of the 6x6 six six paper, I cut a 4x6 piece out of this and I tried to center it to where it says Christmas gifts so I literally cut this four inches wide by the six so it's a six by six so I cut those two I cut that off so we are gonna actually put this on here and then we're gonna do the brad closure through there okay so so what I want to do is I'm going to chomp these with my photo corner chomper. Oh, by the way, speaking of, don't forget to leave a comment down below to enter into the giveaway. All that information is down below. I'm giving away two, uh, two stamp sets. I'm giving away the corner chomper and I'm giving away the essentials photo mats. So there'll be two winners. So if you don't have this photo corner chomper and it, what it does is it, it cuts the corner like that <laughs> right so that when you put it on your faux uh, photo corners a photo mat um, it looks like it's a real it's like the real deal like it's real photo corners that it's sitting up in there okay and when I introduced these photo mats I did show you other alternatives so if you don't have that corner chomper you can you have other options so I, I will link that video Actually, it might even be in the playlist, but I will link that video up here in the cards if you want to check out the introduction to the photo mats to show you different options if you don't have the photo corner chomper. Anyway, so you're supposed to leave a comment for the giveaway in below every video in the playlist except for the introduction videos. And um, But at the end of the project, I will draw two winners from the comment sections of a couple of the videos. And you also have to be a subscriber to my channel. Okay. And if you'd be so kind, give me a thumbs up if you are enjoying the project. Okay, so this will fit right onto there like that. And I think we're gonna go ahead and glue it down. So I'm gonna use art glitter glue for this. I wanna get the little points, you don't have to. And this mente paper is thicker, so you won't see the glue through. This may uh, be a mistake because, you know, art glitter glue, it grabs really fast and sometimes you need some wiggle room, you know. So, we'll see if I messed up. It's probably fine, but you never know. Well, it's good enough, right? I got it on there a little wonky, but again, it's okay. All right. So this is going to go here. So before we do that, let me get my wax seal stuff here. A spoon. I need the uh, custom wax seal beads. And I'm going to need quite a bit, I think. So I'm going to put a whole, let's see. I have some that are already cut. Yeah. 
so it's, it's probably the equivalent of four, four and a half wax seal beads, something like that. I'm gonna cut these up a little bit. But before I get these a melting, well, I guess they could start melting. It may take a minute. Oops, I better maybe cut these up a little bit more. Oops. Might be too much for my little spoon here. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna put them over top of my candle here. I need, where's that piece of paper I just tossed? This cardstock here. I need a one inch hole punch circle. So I'm just gonna use one. And I need to find the center, so I'm just gonna fold it in half. One way, turn it, fold it in half the other way. You're not gonna see it, so it, it doesn't matter. Fold it this way. So now I've got my center. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna poke a hole through the center of that. And I'm gonna use a bread. I don't have small breads. For whatever reason, I can't find them. So I'm just gonna use whatever I have, because again, you're really not gonna see it. So I'm just gonna use a bread. I'm gonna stick it through there. Like that. And I'm going to open the prongs up and then I kind of want to flatten that as much as possible and I also want to trim off these are extra large so if your brad wings are sticking out further than your paper you just need to trim that off but I wanted to really give this a press so it's good and flat And then I'm gonna have that just to wait in here. And then for this piece, I think, I think I'm gonna come up one inch. I'll find the center. I'm gonna come up one inch. And I'm gonna mark it. Mark it with my pencil. And I'm gonna poke a hole. Just like that. And now we need to wait for the wax to melt. Okay. Is it melted? I think it's melted enough. So I'm just gonna pour this right over top. I'm gonna try to make sure that it covers that entire circle there. And then I'm just gonna press this down. Let it do its thing. And then we're gonna sit and wait for it to dry. Hope Haley, thanks for leaving me some some feedback, a review. Love all your backgrounds. Now I have them all. Thank you. That's very sweet. Very, very sweet. Don't you love the shades of color too? I love them so much. Okay, let's see if it's done. Done cooking. Got, oh, yep. Look at there. So now, it says my friend on there. See, we can scoop this aside. So what we want to do is we want to be very gentle. We want to pry these up a little bit. Right, boop. That one was under the wax a little bit. Open them back up. And then we're gonna stick it through here. Oh, no. 
hole's not big enough. Those are big, big brads. If I had a little smaller brad, it wouldn't be giving me so much trouble. There we go. I was like, oh my gosh, it's not going to work. But it did. Okay, so there we have that. And then we can shut it. But I do kind of want to leave a bit of room for the string to wrap around. Like that. And then I'm going to put some tape. I'm going to put a big piece of tape. I've got some one inch. Put some tape on it. Like that. And then I'm going to smush it around. And I'm going to remove the glue, I mean the tape backing, and then we're going to add some fabric tack this time. And we're going to attach it to our top like, uh oh, just threw my lid. Fabri tack, it's Fabri tack by Beacon. I'm going to be generous with it because it's going to be an interactive element. Spreading my glue around by going in circles like that. Okay, and then we're going to attach this down onto the top flap here. Just like that. Isn't this cute? Oops, got some glue seepage. So we've got that so far. So far, so good. Okay, so then I'm going to use black baker's twine. And I'm going to flip this over and we're going to find the center again. I'm just going to mark it so that I can put some tape there. Oops, I don't know what I was looking at. Good grief. I'm going to need that ruler, so I'm going to leave it out. And I'm going to put some tape there and then I'm going to add the string the baker's twine and I think what I'm going to do though is I might because I don't want it to just pull straight out I might do a little wiggle wiggle and then down just because I don't want it to just pull right out. Okay, and then I'm going to put some more tape over top of that. I'll use the one inch. Let's do it like this. I shouldn't have. I hate tearing it to where it's not even. burnish this really good because I really want to make sure that that tape doesn't move. Plus we're going to use liquid glue over top. Okay. So then when we flip it over, we have it to go around this way. Whoops. Whoop. Oh, that tape's in the way. Hang on. 
Let's move that for a second. Right, we don't want it to be too tight. But I'm just gonna go around twice and leave a tail. Right, isn't that cute? Isn't that cute so far? Oh, I just love it. All right, so before we go any further, let me, well, let me move the shaker so it lays a little bit flatter. So we're working on the back side here. So this is gonna go here in the middle somewhere. So we need to decide if we're gonna use the one with the script on it for interest, right? Which looks pretty cool. Or are we gonna use the plane behind it? I kind of like the scripty better. Just a little bit more interest. So we're gonna go with the scripty. We're doing the script. I'm gonna keep this obviously because we're working. This is the size album we're working on, so it's not gonna be thrown away. But I was also thinking about adding some gold paint either gold splatters or maybe gold drippy things or something so we need to do we can do that now and then let that dry while we're doing the rest of this so i'm gonna put that aside so i don't get it all messed up i'm gonna put that aside and those aside i'm gonna grab the paint so this is uh the paint set what, what is it called it's vintage um color color i don't know I have it linked in the Amazon list for this project, um, but it's pretty. I've been using this color right here, and I'm going to spray it first to get it wet. Oh, I need some water in my thingy. Uh, do I have any? I have a little bit. So I'm going to get my little round brush wet. My dirty water thingy. So... This reacts pretty quick to water. So I can't decide if I want to do, where's the top? If I wanna do like, something like that. I don't know if you can see it. Or splashes. I kind of like. I kind of like it. Doing the edges like that, and then maybe we can add just a few little splashes here and there. I don't know how well y'all can actually see it. It's almost like you're inking the edges with some gold watercolor. I don't have it wet enough. Hold on. I think that's good. That's perfect. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. And I need to change my battery. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. I did change my battery real quick, but I still don't think it's completely dry. I'm gonna set that aside for now. Get my photo mats out. Let me make sure there's, not that it's gonna matter if a little bit of gold gets on there. So there's my other there's my other um, cardstock one. And so I'm not going to put them on both front and back. Um, you can, but I'm just not going to right now. So I need one, two, three, four, and then the cardstock one. So I do have one page too many, but that's okay. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna set two of them aside. I could, again, I could mat the back side. I'm just not going to right now. So I am going to stamp these with, let's see. Let's see how it's gonna look really quick. Is there any space for a stamp? Down? No. So it's just gonna be really pretty, I think. So I'm just gonna stamp these with my four by six stamp from my stamp set. Looks like my stamp set looks like this. That's what my stamp set looks like. Yo, I love it so much. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to try to find the center, but it's probably not going to. And I don't, I, it doesn't bother me if it comes out perfect or not. I like the distressed look, so if it's not 100% perfectly stamped, it's totally fine. So just like that. Okay. All right. So now. I'm going to add this to the bottom so I don't get them messed up. And I think I'm just going to use my fiber tack. I was going to use my tape runner tape. Uh, not for this one, but for the rest of them. Maybe I'll get it out. I know I use a lot of different adhesives, but I like having the right adhesive for the right job. <laughs> I can't help it. But again, if I could only get one adhesive, one liquid adhesive, it would be the fiber tack. If I could only get one tape adhesive, it would be the double-sided um, strong tape. Okay. So this is going to go on the bottom layer just because I want it to be good and sturdy down here. get my tape runner tape. So I'm going to add the rest of these on here. Now I just need to make sure I put them right side up and try to line them up because they're going to be in a row. That was a, that was a little shaky there. I haven't had anything to eat yet today. Very bad. I did not sleep well last night. I slept in a little bit. Um, so my day's just been kind of wonky anyway. But I need to eat me something. Okay, so the tape runner tape refills, I have them linked down below and they're from Tape Depot and they are specifically for the pink tape runner. If you have a different one, you just need to research which one, but they are a much better price. You get them in bulk and even with shipping, they're still cheaper per roll than if you was to buy the Scotch brand. It's super expensive to buy the Scotch. You get two rolls for like $10. It's ridiculous. So anyway, um, yeah. Okay, now I think what I want to do is I want to put some tape on the back side of here before we stick anything down. Okay. 
So I'm going to wrap this around again. I might have it a little too snug. So the idea is it's going to go here. But before I put it in the book, I think I'm going to mark... I think I'm going to mark it so that I get it on there pretty good. Okay, that should be good. So I'm just going to mark the corner. And then we'll use the ruler to put it on there good. So, did I even... Yeah, I marked it. So I'm going to put it onto the book first, and then we'll put it on... We'll put that on. gold paint just really took that up a notch didn't it i love that if you don't have the gold paint you could totally do the foil the glue stick distressed foil technique that i've done many times i will put try to find a video and put it up in the cards for you guys to see so you have an option there and then all right let's get the oh i was going to put glue on the back oh, i got myself totally sidetracked I'm going to put glue on the back of this. I want it to double do it. Because I don't want this falling out of my book at all. Okay. Oh, I can't decide if I want to use my ruler or not. Sometimes you can overcomplicate things, you know? I feel like I do that to myself all the time. Well, I think I did a pretty good job. Now I'm gonna try to burnish it with all these layers. <laughs> I wonder if I could burnish it on this side. This is so cute. Now I wonder, I think maybe we should put, I mean, again, we can put four by six photo mats there and I may do that off camera um, because it would look pretty, obviously, um, but your photo is supposed to go there. So you could put the photo mat and just leave it. I think I want to put something on these little strips, but what do I want to put? Oh, let me think about that. I love the way this turned out. I love it. Let me get this piece down here. I think I know what I'm gonna do. So the diamond check, it's the perfect width to fit between these pages on these little areas right here. So let me show you, here's what I think I'm gonna do. Anyway, whoops, I don't know what I'm reaching for. I need my paper trimmer. So I'm gonna cut I'm going to cut the white edge off of this. So this is just on 80 pound cardstock. And then I'm going to cut it to four and a half with, I almost feel like I'm wasting, but. Okay. I'm going to set that aside in my scraps. Then I'm going to go to my Craftment here. How many do I need? I need one, two, three, four, five. I need five. So I'm going to ink the sides of these just real quick. I'm going to line this up on my grid. And I am going to, I'm going to go to the cross section, the points. I'm going to cut straight through those points. Oh, I was like, there's my crack knife. The first one is not going to work, but I'm going to go down to the next section. How many did I say I need? Five?
that that will cut. All right, so we got one little strip like this, and we're going to ink it up, of course, and then it could go here, and it almost, oh, I almost got it too wide. It almost is perfect. I do have it a little too wide. I think I should take it down just a hair. But how cute. I don't know how well you can see it. Let me zoom you in. You see it right there? It's just ever so subtle. You could write names over top of that. It just gives it a little something. I like it. Okay, let me zoom you back out. Whoop, not that way. So cute. All right, I got five strips. I'm just gonna use Fabri-Tac, I think. Or you could use tape runner. But this way I got a little bit of wiggle. Look, I got a big old chunk out of my nail right there. If anybody out there knows anything about when you're doing acrylic nails, you, you should not be in a code situation. And I feel like the past few times I've done my nails, it's been code, my product's been code. And I feel like they're just super fragile. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I do kind of wish I'd put the photo mats on the back side as well. Maybe I'll go back and do it later. But yeah, okay. So I think that's all we're gonna do today in this video, this quick this quick little waterfall that probably took two hours. <laughs> um, with this cool wax seal closure that I adore. And let me stick, and don't forget, um, that I had to fix that. I was thinking about while we're sitting here peddling, I was thinking about adding one of the freebie ornaments onto this page just for some decoration. Thoughts? You guys like that? I mean, we could just add it to the top here. I think I'm going to. Why not? This is a freebie that's in the it's in a buy, the buy me a coffee that's linked down below. It's also in my Facebook group, um, if you're already in my Facebook group. But anyway, that's where this ornament background design came from, my watercolor ornaments that I painted years ago, 2018, I believe. Oops. So yeah, give that a little bit of pizzazz up there. And I know this paper collection doesn't have all these colors in it, but we've added those colors because it needed a little bit more, in my opinion. So have y'all tried that shaker yet, by the way? Super awesome, super fun. I did get some more acetate sheets from uh, scrapbook.com. I haven't tried it yet, but I did get some. I finally, um, I finally, I got them ordered and I have them now. So I'm gonna play with those to see if they're any good. So the next time I do a shaker, I'll use their acetate just to see. Okay, so then this actually goes over here. Oh, I have to be careful now. Oh, you know what I should do? Let's put a dab of glue on the side so that it doesn't get caught up by going in and out of the pocket there. So your photo can still slip up under there, right? You can still do this which is super cute. Look how cute that is. Huh, maybe we should do that. I think I'm going to. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ink, I'm gonna ink. I'm gonna do the four by six. And we're gonna add it in there.
That is so cute. It's probably not center, but hey. All right. Yes, and then we'll come back later and maybe do a collage down here or a label or something down there. But yeah, that looks pretty good. So see, it's, it's, it's worthwhile to piddle. Okay, all right, now let's stick it <laughs> in here. <laughs> Cute little envelopes down in there. All right, so there's the front, and then you flip it, and then you have the back. So you have to do this, and then you flip. I love it. Okay, you guys, don't forget to leave me a comment down below the video and to go back through the playlist and leave comments um, so that you can be entered into win the giveaway. The giveaway? <laughs> the giveaway. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Be sure to, you're subscribed to my channel. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next time. Bye.